How's it going and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are back at the three zone ductless install project. And we're gonna try to get this job wrapped up today. If all goes well, let's do some work. This video is sponsored by Diversitech, your one-stop shop for all your ductless needs. For more information, go to diversitech.com. So the first thing we need to work on is getting the line sets from the attic ran through the chase. We need to make a penetration right here. And then uh, we're gonna come down the wall and go across and the condenser will be right over here. We're gonna run all the line set in some uh, speedy channel just to make it look nice and clean. So I got Trevor in the attic getting ready to run some piping. I need to make that penetration so we can get all this pipe ran. All right, so a little bit of change of plans here. The customer doesn't want me to make the penetration and then come on the outside. Um, he's doing, he originally was gonna have the basement pretty much finished. So that's the way we decided to run it, but he's not gonna do that anymore. So what we're gonna do is actually run the line, uh, all the lines on the inside of the basement, and then we're gonna penetrate somewhere right in this area. And just that way, all we have to do is come down with our speedy channel straight down and then connect into the condenser. So that'll look nice and clean. So now I need to go ahead and spot where we're gonna be cutting our hole. And in order to do that, what I do is grab the actual penetration fitting, and then um, that'll tell me how big of a hole that I can actually cut so it'll be covered up by this fitting, so. All right, so we got the penetration cut. I've got to kind of just put this tape on here so that way when we run the lines through, it doesn't chew up the insulation. And as you can see here, I notched out that penetration fitting. So that way, um, whenever I do put the top piece on it, it does cover everything and it gives us the full access of the hole. So that's what I like to do. Um, but anyway, I got it, went ahead, attached it to there. And as you can see, um, the profile here, uh, I needed to notch out this trim so that, that way it's, it could be a lot closer to the block. It's not perfect. Um, it's about a half of inch difference right here. So what I did, I just used a half of inch spacer down here and ran uh, tap cons all the way through those into the block. So it's good and solid and it's got a pretty even gap all the way down now. So I think that's about the best that I could do for this particular situation. I think it looks really good. Uh, I do like how short the speedy channel is now. So, and then of course we're gonna mount the condenser right here. So these just come in and tie in directly into the condenser. So that is uh, finished. We are now ready to run some uh, lines out here and go from there. All right, so we got all three lines ran all the way to the units inside and all the way out here. So our next step is to get our condenser bracket installed. So I've got the quick sling here, which is gonna be really easy to install. Um, this particular setup, you have the two legs that, that come down the wall, like so. 
and then you have a horizontal piece that mounts to the wall like that and then it just has a, a channel that that slides onto so it makes it really easy all you have to do is just get your measurement right make sure this is on there nice and level and then you slide your legs on depending on your condenser how far apart they need to be and boom you're done and it comes with all the hardware that you need too so that's really nice When it comes to flaring your copper, you wanna make sure you deburr the inside. And then I'm using the Hillmore Orbital Flaring Tool, which has a built-in clutch mechanism that stops when the flaring is done, so you can't overflare it, which is nice. And then secondly, you wanna make sure you torque it down. So I'm using the Digital Torque Wrench by Hillmore, and it has some built-in presets, which is really nice and handy. All right, so we have all the lines tied in now to the condenser. Looks really good. So the next step is getting the cables, the 14.4. I've already have two of them ran down into the basement. We need to run one more, um, but we just need to extend those other two, come through the penetration here and get them ran out. So that is the next step. All right, so it has been a few days and we are back here at this project and we're gonna get it wrapped up. So we're gonna go inside now and start mounting the indoor high walls. All right, so this is going to be the next high wall that we install. And we've got these boxes that I installed at the rough end. Now, because the way these turn in here, this is unusable space when it comes to hooking up the, the refrigerant lines if we're going to flare them. So it would have to be basically here in the middle. And if we look at the actual unit, these lines come pre-flared and they're all the way um, behind the bracket, which is nowhere near the center. So I can't cut these lines down because I wouldn't have a way of, of putting these back on the male side. So I would have to put a female flare and then get a male to male adapter to be able to hook it up to those flares. So that's an option, but I don't have those, those male to male fittings. <clears throat> Cause what I'm going to have to do is probably cut it down to roughly right about here, the center of the unit. So that way I can make my connection right here in the middle. Um, so I think what we're going to end up doing is using my RLS, the press kit, so I've got couplings here, so three eighths and quarter inch. 
this is going to allow me to basically make that connection right in the middle and um, not have to worry about torquing anything down because obviously you need a bunch of room to torque those fittings down. All we have to do is get this jaw in there to make the press uh, connection and then it'll be done. So I think that's going to be the best option for us. All right, so now we can go ahead, get that prepped, and should be ready to go. Okay, so that was a major pain in the butt. Uh, didn't film it, obviously, because it was just a struggle to get that in there. But being able to press the lines back behind here was actually the easiest part. It was just getting everything lined up to try to fit everything in there and to be able to access it. So, but once we got it, once we got it in there, then it went fine. But, uh, got the power wire ran all the way over here. Here's the discharge line for the condensate pump that we have to install and the drain line. So we're going to strip back that insulation, cut it, and we're going to mount our condensate pump right here. All right, so the pump that I'm gonna be installing today is by Assurity. What's really cool about this one, it is multi-voltage, so 115 to 230, depending on what kind of ductless unit you're working on. And this one's rated for 26 feet of lift. On this particular application, we have maybe three feet, so no problem there. But this is a design where it mounts right below the actual indoor unit. So, and it looks nice and streamlined, same color as the actual wall mount. So, and they're designed to be very, very quiet and accessible. So for, all you have to do is pop the cover off and you can get to the reservoir, you can get to everything to clean it out during maintenance. So that's what I like about these, instead of having to take the whole indoor unit apart just to get to everything, it's pretty nice. Alrighty, here is the final product. I think that looks really nice. Those pumps just match the unit real nice. So pretty pleased about that. Nice and tight. And what's cool is that you can, because the way I notched it out, you can remove this whole plastic piece to work on the unit without removing the pump. So turned out really nice. All right, now that we've got everything connected, it's time to do a pressure test on all zones. And while we're waiting for that, we're gonna go ahead and start on some electrical. Since the disconnect was about eight feet away, we decided to run some hard EMT conduit. Now that we got that finished, it's time to pull a vacuum. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the Hillmore vacuum here and get it going. With this three quarter inner diameter hose, it's gonna take it no time to go ahead and hook up all three zones and get them connected. So what I did was one at a time, I pulled the vacuum, opened up the valves to release the internal charge, and went on to the next one. All right, so that's pretty much gonna wrap it up for today's video. We got almost everything complete. We can't start up the equipment because there's just no power on the home yet. So um, we need to start it up, and then also we need to tether the top of the condenser to the house 
Anytime you've got this dual fan condenser on these systems, it's smart to tether it to the house. That way if there's too much wind or whatever the case is, because they can be a little top heavy. So we need to come back and do that and then uh, start it up. All the valves, everything is open, ready to go. We do need to add 10 ounces of refrigerant to get this system up to a proper capacity. We did measure all of the line sets and we had about 163 linear feet and this condenser comes pre-charged for right at 98 feet. So when you do the calculation at like 0.16 ounces um, per feet, gives you about 10 ounces of refrigerant. So that's gonna give us a full complete charge whenever we come back to get it all started up. So uh, man, but that's gonna pretty much be it. If you guys have any questions about the products that I've been using on this system, um, I'm gonna leave a link down in the description for you to Diversitex catalog. They pretty much cover anything and everything that you're gonna need when it comes to materials on these ductless systems or any system for that matter. So um, all of their products are super high quality and I use them all the time. On this job, we had the speedy channel line hide there, um, the wall mount for the condenser. Inside, we used that UV light to be able to keep that blower wheel nice and clean, along with those condensate pumps um, for those other two high walls. So anyhow, I'll leave that uh, link down in the description for you. That's pretty much gonna be it. Really hope you guys got something out of it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, see you later. Woo!